we've been working on, on uh, developing these printers for a while, and uh, about uh, two or three years ago, we took our research platform and made it open source. Uh, and this platform that you see here on the right is called the Fab at Home, in one word. Um, it's an open source platform for 3D printing with multiple materials. And it uh, turns out that while we initially were work developing this uh, platform for printing things that are inorganic, like robots and things like that, uh, one of the biggest applications of this uh, platform was to work on uh, printing biological materials. And so a number of uh, researchers have took this platform, have taken this platform and used it to print a variety of things, uh, a variety of biological uh, uh, objects with it. So for example, one of the things that we've done in the lab is print uh, cartilage, uh, a meniscus cartilage of the, uh, uh, of the knee, uh, print that uh, basically and uh, uh, in, the, in the shape of the original meniscus and use that to uh, incubate that and demonstrate that the properties, uh, the biological properties of this new printed meniscus correspond to uh, uh, those that are of a real meniscus and are uh, suitable in terms of its biological properties. There's still a long way to go before we can take these things and directly implant them into a human. There are more animal uh, tests that needs to be done. Uh, there's a, the whole series of steps. I think before this can be compatible uh, at the same scale commercially as conventional implants, but just imagine if you could take that, if you could take cells from a donor, uh, take those cells, culture them, put them into, a, um, into an ink and recreate a implant that is alive and made of the original cells as the donor, um, that how uh, useful that could be in terms of avoiding rejection in terms of having a living uh, implant rather than a synthetic implant and so forth. This is, uh, again, we, we, what we'll do here is uh, Jeff is now printing a uh, construct that in the shape of cartilage of an ear uh, that uh, is, is not being printed out of ear material, so mm -hmm. to speak, but uh, it is uh, being printed out of silicone. But it's the same process exactly with a different uh, ink. And what you can see here is that uh, it takes approximately 20 minutes to do something like that. The process doesn't end with the printing. So normally uh, we would print something like this. Uh, we might even print it into a substrate that will allow it to be suspended and, and uh, incubated. We'd have to incubate it for a while and, uh, and, uh, to, until it has appropriate properties uh, and only then uh, uh, implant it.